XLOOKUP is by far one of the most popular dynamic array functions. Why is it so popular? Well, for a couple of reasons. Everybody loves a lookup. And if you're familiar with VLOOKUP or index and match, you'll know exactly what I mean. But XLOOKUP takes a lot of the complexity out of doing complex lookups. Now, if you're already familiar with VLOOKUP or maybe even index and match, you'll know that VLOOKUP does have its limitations. For example, if we take a look at this data set just here, this is a data set related to apps. So we can see the category of the app, whether it's game, productivity, social media, so on and so forth. The name of the app, and I'm sure you'll recognize many of these. The type of app, so whether it's a free app, whether it has ads, whether it's subscription, so on and so forth. And then the revenue and the profit generated by these apps. Now, maybe over here, I want to be able to select an app from a drop down list and have it return the category, the type, the profit and the revenue from the table. So let's start out by putting our data into a table. Control T. Click on OK. Now, once again, we're going to get rid of that hideous table style. We're just going to set this to a plain table style and let's give our table a name. We'll just call this apps. Now what I'm going to do is set up my data validation drop down list. Now, in this particular scenario, all of the apps listed are unique already. So I don't need to do a unique formula over here. I, I can simply go straight in and select my list from the table. So let's go up to data. We're going to click the drop down data validation. We want a list and the source for our list is the app column just here. Click on OK. So now we have this long list of apps. So let's just select Candy Crush as an example. Now, if I wanted to select Candy Crush and have it return the category. If you take a look at this table, you can see that the lookup value that we're using is the app, but we want to return the category. Now, because the category is to the left of the lookup value, VLOOKUP wouldn't work in this scenario. Simply because with VLOOKUP, and if we try and do it, you'll see what I mean. Our lookup value is Candy Crush, our table array, is this table just here, our apps table. This is where we encounter the problem, the column index number. Because normally we need to provide VLOOKUP with a number, one, two, three, four, depending on the column where our answer lives. So if we're looking up the category, it would be minus one because we always count from where the lookup value column is. So if it's the app column to return the category column, we're kind of counting backwards. You'd need like a minus one in here as opposed to a one, two, three. But minus one isn't a valid column index number when you're using VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP wouldn't work in this particular scenario. So this might be where we go into using something like index and match. And one of the things you have to remember about index and match is that this is a bit of a hack. Index and match are two separate functions that people kind of mash together in order to get around the limitations with VLOOKUP. Now this would work if we were using index and match. So let's take a quick look at it. Our array is where our answer lives. So we're looking for the category. So our array would be this comma. We then need to go into match to find the row number. So our lookup value is what we have in cell I3. Where are we going to find it? Well, we're going to find it in the apps column and we're doing an exact match. So we want a zero on the end. Close off match, close off index, hit enter and we get the correct result. If we take a look at Candy Crush, that is indeed in the game category. So index and match would work in this scenario. It's more flexible than VLOOKUP. However, the problem with index and match is that this also has its limitations, one of them being it can only look from top to bottom in your data set. And also people always struggle trying to remember this formula. So this is where XLOOKUP comes in. Check this out. If we go for XLOOKUP instead, lookup value. Our lookup value is Candy Crush, comma, lookup array basically means where are we looking up the word Candy Crush? We're looking it up in the apps column, comma. What do we want to return? We want to return the category column. Close the bracket, hit enter, and we are done. That is so much easier. Those arguments are a lot easier to understand, and we're not mashing together different formulas to get to the answer. So in its most basic iteration, 
XLOOKUP is so much simpler. Now, if we go down to type, let's type in equals XLOOKUP again. Our lookup value once again is Candy Crush. We're looking it up in the apps column. We want to return the type, but this time if we press comma, you can see that we have three optional arguments. And again, you don't get these if you're using index and match. So we can specify what we want it to return if it can't actually find the lookup value in the table. So this is quite nice in terms of error reporting. So we could say no record, for example. Now remember these are mandatory, you don't have to type them in, but let's take a look, quick look at all of them. The next one is the match mode. So we can determine if we want an exact match, an exact match or next smaller item, an exact match or next larger item, or a wildcard character match. So this allows us to do effectively things like partial matches. If you want to do an exact match of the word Candy Crush in the table, then you'd want a zero in here. And then the final argument allows us to specify which way through the data we're searching. Remember, index and match will only search first to last. So it will find the first instance from the top down of Candy Crush and it will return the answer from the category. Whereas with XLOOKUP, we can choose to search first to last, that is the default, or we can search last to first. We can even do binary searches, which are perfect if our data is sorted in ascending or descending order. So you have a lot more flexibility with XLOOKUP as well. So let's go for a one on the end here, close the bracket, hit enter, and it returns in-app purchases. Now let's just double check that. Yes, that is correct. So there we go. I've just finished off the last two for profit and revenue. And let's check to make sure this works if we change the app that we've selected in the dropdown. So let's go for Office Lens. Now, if we find that in the table, it's just here. Yes, it's productivity. Yes, it's free with ads. And then we have the profit and also the revenue. So that's how XLOOKUP works. As you can see, much simpler than index and match, but more flexible than VLOOKUP. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.